Well, I'm interested in democracy and the two, two questions I think about a lot are what does democracy need and require from religious institutions and people? And on the other side, what is it legitimate to require by, can religious people expect something from democracies? What's the minimum they can expect? And I call this, rather than secularism, because I, I feel this, this creates all sorts of problems. Uh, and I want to get some idea of mutual respect. And I call that the twin tolerations. And all I mean by that is that for democracy to function, religious individuals and institutions have to respect and tolerate the results of democratic processes and the right, and the, indeed the sovereignty, of democratic institutions to write laws, right? So, for, and on the other hand, and this has been often under-theorized by people who are interested in secularism, we're talking about citizens, we're talking about individuals. What about if these individuals, as in India, many of them are deeply religious? What right do they have to expect? What rights should they expect from um, democracy? I think democracy should respect their right not only for privacy, in the privacy of their, of their mind, to arrive at the faith they want. So, belief. It goes way beyond belief. It's public practice, a statement in civil society of some of your, your interests, your arguments, and the right to organize, indeed, in political society. I mean, look, Christian democracy did that. The founders of much of the European Union were Christian democracy. So this idea that religion should be restricted only to this, this private sphere, uh, I think is wrong. If we're thinking about that, then it's interesting that uh, the word toleration uh, is much less of a problem than the word secularism. The word secularism, I mean, uh, if I use the word secularism, I only use it now as multiple secularisms, in the sense that uh, there are indeed many varieties by which democracy can have a secularism that is democratic. But there are many different types. So the idea that there's only one a huge problem in Tunisia, where I'm working a lot now, is that the, the, the people trained in the French tradition see that there's really only one version of secularism, and that's the French 1905 version of secularism, which really entails almost a complete separation of church and state. And so, it, and not only that, there's a certain, it's a religiously unfriendly uh, form of secularism. Indeed, the, and this has been compounded in the, these countries by the fact that the, the Arab word uh, for secularism in Arabic is Almaniya. Almaniya absolutely implies, as a word, a certain pejorative stance towards religion. We need to think about things like this. And we need to think about things, and I, I'm, I'm actually convinced that Tunisia still has a chance for being a democracy, but the hard secularists are French 1905 secularists, and they simply can't believe that any form of religion in the polity uh, is acceptable. The most religiously unfriendly law that's ever been passed uh, in a democracy was the 1905 French approach to religion and state. Turkey followed that. And, but, so they're the iron triangle of authoritarian uh, secularism. It's 1905 France, Ataturk, and Bourguiba, and now Ben Ali. Look, nobody believes that we're gonna expect, uh, uh, accept women's rights. But he said, look, uh, wh what was the word we accepted? We accepted for secularism. Uh, against secularism, we suggested civic state. 
Civic state is a good word because it means not a religious state and not a military state. Egypt's going to have a military state, and some people think we're going to have a religious state here. We don't want it. But we do want a democracy, and we want a civic state. Um, so there's a lot of interesting thinking about this and creating new concepts. Uh, and so we're living in a very important times.